So here I'm going to review for you the motion of a spring and uh, in this course what we are doing is that we are assuming that uh, if a force of F units extend the natural length of a spring by S units then this is the relationship between the two where K is called the spring constant. So let's look at this phenomena. So now we are going to attach a mass of m units here at the end of this spring. So what will happen as a result is that this spring will stretch. Okay. Now let's consider this scenario that a mass weighing 24 pounds stretches a spring four inches beyond its natural length. So what does this mean? What this means is the following. That is uh, you have a mass here and weighing means that we have the gravity combined in here and that is 24 pounds. Okay. And uh, then the displacement, this uh, displacement is how much? Uh, four inches okay so since it is four inches uh, that means uh, four inches will be what it will be one third of a foot okay so so we have 24 equals k times 1 over 3 and what does this, what this gives us is that for this spring, this particular spring that we are talking about, K is how much? Uh, 72 foot pounds, okay? So now here is the spring is stretched and let's call this position here or this, uh, just this level as the equilibrium position. All right, and sorry, sorry again. So now we know that for our spring, just one moment, that for our spring, the spring constant is 72 foot pounds. And let me raise this to get more space. And uh, let's see that we have this situation here, that this is the spring is set in motion by releasing it from rest at a point three inches above the equilibrium position. So let's just discuss the motion of this spring now. So what will happen now is that a spring will just go above and below the equilibrium position and what we are going to do is let's call this displacement say x okay and we will just treat the dis displacement in feet and if x is below the ex equilibrium position we'll treat x as positive on the other hand if uh, the motion if the displacement is above the equilibrium position we'll measure it as negative okay so they had two like unusual situation here vertically we are measuring we are using the displacement as x instead of y and uh, downwards is positive upwards is negative but just let's just keep this orientation for this particular situation so now we would like to find the equation of this motion all right so now note that for this motion the resultant of all the forces would forces would be the mass times the acceleration of this uh, moving body and the motion is occurring under the action of the following forces. So what do we have when it's traveling downwards? First we have uh, the uh, displacement of one third of a foot okay, beyond the natural length and then x inches further down. So the spring will counter it by its restoration force and that restoration force is 
this is the displacement beyond the natural length and this is the spring constant and the reason I put negative sign is that uh, this is measured downward side and spring will have its restoration force acting upwards and then there is additional force uh, because of the mass of because of the mass that we put here and what that will be uh, that will be mass of you know th this body that we attached here mass times the gravity and remember we are assuming that uh, the weight of the spring is uh, negligible as compared to the mass of the body here okay. so let's simplify this equation all right so here uh, if we go ahead and open these brackets what we will get is this that we shall get that uh, this is equals negative kx just simple algebra and also remember something that we had erased let me just uh, bring it back so we had erased this that uh, remember that uh, 24 equals uh, k times 1 over 3 and uh, then also we have it is still written right here that mg is 24 pounds so if you combine these two what that will result in is this that these two terms will cancel each other right so our equation of the motion simply is in this case let me erase this now okay is uh, simply m sorry m d 2 x d t square equals negative k x as a consequence of the Newton's law of second Newton's second law of motion okay now let's just fill in the values so we have uh, k equals 72 and for m we have this equation so we have m times uh, then g here g is how much 32 feet per second square and that equals 24 so this gives us what that our m will be 24 uh, divided by 32 which is going to be if we just cancel the common factors okay that will be 3 over 4 and in this foot pound second system we called the unit of the masses you know taken is called a slug that you have written that you have seen in your book so our equation of the motion is or the differential equation governing this motion is this and uh, let's just observe the initial conditions that is initially we were three inches above the equilibrium position that means uh, what that means simply that x sub 0 remember above we will measure as negative so x equals negative 3 inches over 12 that means negative 1 fourth of a foot and the mass was released from rest uh, that means that the initial velocity is uh, 0 foot per second okay so now just let's just go ahead and solve this as a typical differential equation all right so i'm now to going to take our question as just a simple equation solving problem all right so this is a differential equation let's just simplify the situation here uh, so three if we cancel three what we shall get is 72 over 3 is 24 and this is going to give us what 24 times 4 is how many 96 all right so our equation finally is that uh, d2 dx square and then plus 96x equals 0 so if we assume that uh, x equals uh, e to the mt is a e to the mt is a solution sorry okay 
then what will happen is that m square plus 96 would be 0 okay and m square plus 96 is 0 is going to to give us m as the square root of negative 96 and which will be how much 16 times 6 is 96 so that will be 4 times the square root of 6 and then you have i so when this is the situation then uh, what happens our solution would be y equals c1 cosine of uh, 4 square root of 6 t right because we have complex roots here and the real part in this complex root is 0 so we wouldn't have any factor of e in here and then c2 sine 4 square root of 6 t all right now when we apply the uh, sorry I should have said x equals as a, okay so anyways sorry about that now remember this that x uh, 0 is x at 0 is how much x at 0 is negative one third uh, which uh, gives us what that uh, let's put 0 in here so this is a this is 0 and sine of 0 will be 0 so this implies that uh, this is going to be negative one third and cosine 0 is 1 okay so that gives us uh, what that simply gives us that c1 equals negative one third right okay and then well, we can go ahead and uh, substitute and, and differentiate this or get the dx over dt so this is x okay so our dx over dt would be what let me just do it right below there just using chain rule here okay so we got uh, dx over dt equals uh, negative for see we have cosine of a quantity so that will derivative would be negative sine of the quantity times the derivative of the quantity which is 4 square root of 6 so oops sorry about that uh, I should have copied only that so this is a uh, 4 square root of 6 and then c1 all right and then what sine of this quantity right and uh, then we have uh, sorry and here we will have by the same uh, rule 4 square root of 6 then c2 times the cosine of this quantity right okay but and dx over dt at 0 we know how much is that that's a 0 and uh, then that what is that going to produce for us that if we substitute 0 in here this uh, value is 0 here this will become 0 sorry and then this equals 0 so what we have uh, next is this that uh, from this equation we obtain that here this this is out right and then this is a 1 so multiplication by 1 we can just ignore that so that simply gives us what c2 equals when we divide by 4 square root of 6 or a non-zero quantity times c2 is uh, 0 that means c2 is 0 right so our equation of the motion finally becomes uh, what it will just simply become negative one third right times cosine of four square root of six t oh i just noticed that i made a uh, made a copying mistake here 
Uh, remember our x at 0 was negative 1 over 4 feet uh, but what I did was uh, this that I wrote that as uh, x at 0 is uh, negative 1 third so I'm sorry about it so let's just make corrections here okay and uh, I just did think that I took something incorrect there so our uh, equation of motion is we can say formally that x as a function of t is negative one fourth uh, cosine of four square root of six 